I would rather be here with you right now than to not be with you here right now is what we want to feel when we're with someone or at least i do and as someone who is quite introverted and loves her alone time it doesn't happen too often but it definitely does happen now given this a little bit of thought namely what is it that for me personally at this very stage of my life makes someone interesting and fun to be with i think part of it is this intangible thing that we like to call chemistry the interaction feels natural and effortless and you may not quite understand why. I think back on some of the experiences that I've had when I think of chemistry. So there was this one time when I was in a shared Uber with someone and for the entirety of the ride, which was about 15 minutes, we talked and laughed like we had known each other for years and years and yet we had just met. It was almost unsettling how well it flowed and I remember getting out of the Uber just thinking what the hell happened? I was so confused. Now obviously that level of chemistry or whatever you want to call it isn't to be expected or required to form a friendship. Actually I think more often than not this feeling of being in sync with someone builds over time with people. But I do think we can also tell when it's just not going to happen with someone. Trust. I don't think any kind of genuine friendship is possible unless there is trust. And I also don't believe that we can trust someone a little bit. You either trust someone or you don't. There is no in between. So what is trust? You know, what does it feel like? So in the past, when I would express my trust to someone, I would say something along the lines of, I know that you would never betray me. But actually, that's not true at all. For me, trust is not about knowing for sure that something is or isn't going to happen because we simply can't know. Everyone we interact with, every person we have in our lives are fully capable of hurting us just like we are capable of hurting them. So what I believe then is that trust is faith rather than truth. It is choosing to believe despite never knowing for certain. It is taking a leap of faith over and over again. It's a choice that you make every day. It is two people connecting or meeting in vulnerability despite being unsure but still hoping. Trust, much like love, is about letting go of control because there is no control, there's only faith. And I don't necessarily mean that in a religious way, just faith in hoping and believing. Shared values is more important than shared interests. I want to talk about something that I thought I knew to be true, which may be true, I don't know, but something that I have started viewing differently recently. So I used to subscribe to the theory that you needed to have a lot of common interests in order to have a friendship with someone. And sure, having an overlap is probably necessary in establishing a common ground, something to then build a relationship on. But more importantly than interest, I think it's the values and the principles in life that need to overlap. For example, me and another person both being curious and open to new experiences I think is more important than the both of us liking photography or the same sport. Like let's say that I am a big foodie, which I am, and my friend is not, but she or he enjoys trying new things and will gladly go to new restaurants and try different cuisines with me. That I believe is more important than just the both of us being foodies. You know, I think what's actually important is the ability and willingness to pay attention, ask questions and show genuine interest and curiosity in other people's interests. To want to learn and to want to get involved, basically how you treat each other's hobbies. And partly because interests can change over time and they often do as we go through different chapters in life, whereas values can change but don't really tend to change that much. And also in a friendship I appreciate it when the thing that we're doing is not as important as how it feels when we're doing whatever. Like the people that I feel the most comfortable and myself with aren't the people that I need to do activities with, it's the people that I can do absolutely nothing with and still feel at ease. With that being said though, I do love it when friends recommend me books. Seriously, it's like a love language of mine. So here are a couple of recommendations of mine to you, one of which completely opened up my eyes to the way that I live my life and the way that I want to continue to live my life. And yeah, isn't it quite crazy how one single book 
can do that. So we're in the time of the year when I especially love enjoying slow mornings, going on long walks and getting cozy inside and I make sure to always have some sort of audio entertainment ready to go. For years now, Audible, who is our sponsor today, has been my go-to as they have an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, everything from business to memoirs and so much more. Now that it's getting darker and colder, I'm more into fiction and my current listen is Butcher's Crossing by John Williams. The story follows William Andrews, a young Harvard student who leaves his life behind to explore the American West. If you have been here for a while, you know that the book Stoner by John Williams is my favorite book of all time. The writing is incredible, beautiful, and so this is the first other book by John Williams that I'm listening to. I just love being able to get completely sucked into a book as I'm on the go. You know, I don't need to carry around a physical book. Instead, I have all of my audio entertainment in one app. I plug in my headphones and just like that, I am transported into a different world while I'm out jogging or cleaning or when I'm in an Uber and it's just so convenient. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Members also get full access to a growing selection of included audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts. Let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh and be inspired and to be entertained. And new members can try Audible free for 30 days. So you can visit audible.com slash Lana Blakely or you can text Lana Blakely to 500 500. Being interesting is overrated. You know, I don't think you need to travel the world or have a PhD to be desirable as a friend. I personally couldn't really care less about things like that. I think most people lead quite mundane lives and I love hearing about it. Being interested However, I think most people would agree that having to be the one to carry a conversation is quite draining. Like if you tell your friend something like, yeah, I'm all right, I've just been feeling stressed at home lately. And the response is, aw, I see, period. It doesn't make you feel like they were even listening to what you were saying and it really does not make you feel like they care for that matter. Now it's not about asking groundbreaking questions, it's not about being someone's therapist, but just asking something simple like, oh, how come? Having a zest for life. Speaking of not being someone's therapist, I used to be really good at being certain people's emotional dumpster. I would sit for hours and just listen to people complain and spill all of their issues on me and I would just take it until I felt like I literally became the dumpster. I almost lost myself in everyone else's problems. Adult me has a close to zero emotional dumpster policy. Like I will happily help friends in tough times. I'm all ears if they want to complain about something. I love complaining about stuff sometimes, but not routinely, not chronically, not that being the only thing that you're ever doing. You should not, and I am not sacrificing my mental well-being, one that I have worked to maintain, one that I've gone to therapy for, for someone who won't do the same. Everyone has problems. We're all trying, we're all making an effort to put ourselves out there and to be vulnerable, to let loose and to be enjoyable to be around. And we all want to be around people who are also making that effort. Good vibes, that's honestly the best way to put it, I think. Now, I wanna know what makes you want to be around someone and to be their friend.